I'm not sure I might have mentioned to Rebellion Mayor of Klugman that the other day when the Xeira came out to that you can go without a mask in the street, I, I took off the mask in the street. I limited amateurish amount of research that I did, I would have kept wearing it. But there was a reason I decided to take it off. I remember 40 years ago, it was a tzaddik who became later, his name was a household world, household word, Rumeir Shuster Zatzal. Rumeir Shuster freelanced going to the Kaisal. It was his own initiative. By the way, he was the probably listed in the Guinness World Book of Records as the most shy person in the world. And on his own initiative, somehow, the Benisham gave him this initiative, not institutionally as a yochid, he went to the Kaisal and he began bringing people to Osameach, Eishatera. Lo'aleinu, he had a tragedy. Ten-year-old daughter was killed. A truck ran her down in Ezra's Torah in the street, and he was sitting shiver. Rameh Shusta sent a Shaila to Rav Yashiv to ask Rav Yashiv, can he get up in the middle of Shiva to go to the Kaisal because the student that's there today won't be there tomorrow. It's Pikuch Nefesh. Tatsolos Nefoshes. So Rabbi Yashav sent back a shliach saying, Me'ika din, primarily, essentially, yes. But you don't do things. We have a Kabbalah, that that's our Hanhoga, that's the norm of how we behave. We don't do things that will portray us and present us as peculiar and eccentric. Didn't explain, but he said that's Ahan Hoga. I mentioned this to a Shochan, a Talmud Chochem, and he immediately, a neighbor of mine, Rav Shkedi, and he immediately related it to the Rambam in Hilchus Nozir that the Rambam says a father can theoretically accept Nazirus, the state of being a nausea for his son. But the son is a cotton, and the family and the son don't want it and are uncomfortable with it, they don't have to accept it. They feel awkward. It's making them look extraordinary not in a positive extraordinary, in a negative extraordinary. I think th the understanding that we have to have of this is that our self-perception is garnered through how we sense people perceive us. Unconsciously, subliminally, and to a certain extent, consciously. How do they look at us? And that shapes our self-image. And our self-image is what determines how we behave and how we perform. When the Mishnah says that a Jew has to guide himself 
by that which is Teferis, glory for his maker and for Odom, for man. The Ben Shem's okay with me. What difference does it make if men are okay with me? Because I can't escape that. That is the nature of a human being as we have often given the definition, a human being, the Torah teaches us, is a psychological, not a logical entity, not a computer. He's made up of emotions and physiology, and everything kicks in to shape, determine his own self-image. And that, in turn, makes the difference of how he behaves. Meshach Chochma, Pasha's Kedoshim, urge you to learn it word for word on the Ahafta Reyacha Kamocha. Probably the most commonly quoted Posik verse from the Torah, usually misquoted as thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's not neighbor. Reacho is friend. That is quoted, that verse, by Hillel as a primary axiom in the Torah and the instructions for the candidate who asks seemingly in a peculiar way to be given a, a short course while he's standing on one leg and what Torah is all about and he says He's told the Ahafta, this is the cloud Godel, the Ahafta Reyecha Kamocha. Benazai says, Zeus Teilus, this is the Taylor of the Odom, is, is a cloud which implied in the discussion of the Gemara is that this is a, a larger cloud. But let's go step by step. Some connected that Reyacha, the Rebbeinu Shalom, God is sometimes referred to in relation to man as his friend. And the friend of man. The Rebbeinu Shalom assumes different manifestations and how he shows himself in the world and interacts with the world in this medium as well as friend. So it includes the famous question, only is man man? So this would include man God as well if you go with that understanding that it is in the umbrella is the Rebbeinu Shlalem's interaction with men as such. In this discussion of the Ahavta Reyacha Kamocha, this verse, Rameya Simcha describes, brings the Medrash Tmura, that the famous inductive argument that if you find something that is well designed, organized, put together, 
it screams, it yells that this was intentionally designed as such, there must have been a designer. Of course, that's according to the Medrash Rabba and Lech Lecho, that's what Avram did when he saw the well-lit, well-organized palace. Couldn't have happened by happenstance. Too improbable. It's a more reasonable assumption to assume because that is the way we think and the way we live when we find something that was in fact well organized and designed we immediately conclude that there was a designer there was some rationale behind this you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to to figure that out there is a position in philosophy this isn't a forum to discuss it some of you may be familiar with it you can research it where somebody put forth the argument well could it could be it's all a dream I'm asleep right now and I'm just dreaming that all you guys are sitting here and one day I'm going to wake up go prove that it's not a dream My simple answer to that is that it's hard to, if I was dreaming, I could never have conceived of such an absurd nightmare as the trial in Hog. It's inconceivable. No rational mind could dream such a dream. So it can't be a dream. But there are those that wouldn't accept that argument. Even the leftist world today, in the liberal world, seems to have a pension for the built-in urgency of man for competition. So even the socialist, leftist orientation feel they have to go whole hog in hog to compete for who can be more absurd, more outrageously anti-Semitic. Rameer Simcha discusses that there's a design. The Medrash Tumura. That is the way we tend to function, most of us, most of the time, and it's a reasonable. It's a reasonable hypothesis, and we can't escape. Much talk, much print, much paper has been spent on trying to escape our sense of connection to the rational, that which is reasonable in our assumptions of how the world works shortest distance between two points, the straight line. I'm not asleep. It's not a dream. Frequently, the difference between when I will buy into that and when I'll fall back on the argument 
that well maybe it is a dream is what's what makes what works for me better what unconsciously may serve my desires my sense of wanting to indulge myself or I'll say well maybe and then I'll revert back to the more rational when I have no need to write a check on that overdraft of indulgence. So Ramea Simcha talks about this. And I think the world screams and yells. Teleology, purposefulness. Are there intelligent people that will escape that or try and escape that? Of course. Intelligence is only one feature of the collective syndrome of competing needs to be expressed in the human personality. Remember, the peculiar blend of a body and a soul according to our understanding of it. Navigating, negotiating, competing. Then Ramea Simcha goes a second step and he says that man has free will. It's again Could I say I'm merely the sum total of every experience that I previously had? Could say that. You could say today's Wednesday and today's night. You could say a lot of things. But we again interact with the world based on assuming that when you pushed me online, you could not have pushed me. You didn't have to do that. And therefore, I hold you responsible. It's primary to our thinking and our feeling that we have free will and we are re thus responsible for our actions. Now, if all this happened accidentally, how could that prime source have created a creature with free will if it wasn't independent of all of the other variables in this universe. It had to be independent of that in order to create a creature that has free will, man. And then he goes a third step. And then within this species called man, there's one group that seems to defy all of the norms of the way history, anthropology, sociology govern the probabilities of the behavior of man, the Jewish people. And when Shleim Amela says, Misa is oilem in Amidba, ketimras ha'oshon, the Gemara in Yuma says, The column of smoke coming from the Mishkan testifies, it becomes symbolic of the uniqueness of Am Yisrael in history. It did move with the wind either to the north or to the south, but as a column. It didn't disperse. It continued as a column. It's not the way 
a column of smoke behaves. And it's an anticipation, a nevoah, that Klayasol will move in Golos from one place to another, but they won't disperse and disappear. They will continue as an identifiable entity, a unique, peculiar entity in how they how they behave. The Nitziv brings on the Posik in Malachi, the Ishru Eschem Kol Hagoyim. The Goyim will endorse you. Malachi, the last Novi. He see you atem eretz chayfetz. You will be a nation. You, this people. Somebody's in Brooklyn. Somebody's in Argentina. Somebody's in Baghdad. They're all over. But atem, you, the people. You will be a nation. Ki atem eretz chayfetz omar Hashem tzvokos. Unique. You continue to care about each other, be devoted to each other, help each other, argue always. Fractionalism. Sometimes you keep having to go to Bhirot to remember and be reminded that you have Bechira. <laughs> so the Benisham's ironic response to our dulled sense of who we are and what we are. But the Pasek understood it as such. The Nitziv understands that that's And yet, we have in Hosea, Nivla Yisrael ato hoyu bagoyim kechli ein chayfetz bo. You're like a utensil that the nations don't want. They're tossing it away. The free world knew about the Holocaust. It's all documented by non-Jews. All kinds of junctures. Not just tens of lives, Hundreds of thousands, millions could have been saved. It wasn't propitious. It wasn't, it didn't fit in. They were given the plans of the tracks leading to Auschwitz to Buchenwald. Could have been bombed to delay deaths. Didn't fit with the immediate strategic war effort. So we should rely on them? But it's a stealer, it's a contradiction. The Pesach and Malachi says, they will endorse your uniqueness. You know when they'll endorse it? When we endorse it. Shemi Shmuel brings 
a medrash. The medrash says, talking about the laws of Yerusha, of inheritance. If a man has two wives, inconceivable for us today, how could somebody handle more than one? Or be handled by more than one? <laughs> but for Takonis Rabbeinu Gershon, that was the, that was the Mitzit. It was a different world. Teva changes. That's why you need an oral law. To be able to maximize the potential of the halacha, but again, according to criteria and according to the norms of the halacha from within, not from without. Because when it's, as soon as you go outside, the orbit of expertise and halacha and objective meseiris, then it becomes hefka. And then you tend to disappear. There's ein chayfetz. There's no desire. There's a disdain. You're treated not just as another nation, you're treated as less than another nation. It's either or, this fauna says. I'm yourself the brocha or the klola. The blessing or the curse, no middle ground. And you'll swing like a pendulum in history based on how you, the integrity, the passion, the enthusiasm, the heroism to which you adhere to the Daf Gemara. Because we have no access to understanding the psukim, the verses from Sinai. And we then again revisit it and come from within. The second luchas, the second tablets were carved by Meshe Rabbeinu the lettering is the same lettering. There is a minority position that even the lettering, Moshe Rabbeinu participated somehow in again reconnecting to the Luchas, and therefore he has a chilek in the, in the Ksav. But simple read is that the, the tablets, most Mephoshim go that way, and the Ksav, the Oseus came back, and the Medrash teaches, and the Mephoshim speak about it, again, Rameh Simchad and Atziv and others, they talk about the need for Teresh Balper. then in the second Luchos, begins a new period in world history that we're going to have to adjust to situations, challenges that will be different in every place. And yet we have to remain the same, not to disperse. How are you gonna pull that off? Nobody else has ever done that. As soon as they don't have their physical, earthly country, they're gone as a nation. They're not a political entity. And we have to go beyond that. So your choice, says the Shemish Mul, Yerusha. He has one wife that he Ahuva, one wife snua, one wife that he loves and one wife that he doesn't love, despises. You cannot change the order of the Yerusha. The Pchor is the Pchor. 
The Medush that he quotes, the Shem Ishmael says, the nations of the world, Ahuva, are infatuated with themselves and their own need to take what they can from their living experience, to indulge pleasure. Say that we'll ne negotiate some kind of a methodology of keeping out of each other's way, only for pragmatic considerations, not not because it's ideally true. Echod Ahuva, one, that's the nations of the world. They love themselves. Echod Snua, Am Yisrael, the Medrash predicts, will develop a self-hate. There'll be those in Am Yisrael that will absorb the external image that they are picking up as they are pers persecuted, pursued. It seeps in and they begin to think of themselves as their pursuers think of them. That's like a kli, like a utensil that is not valued. It's discarded. But if we step back, get a glimpse, a moment of objectivity, a moment of transcendence over the din, the noise, the visual and audio pollution that infests the air and the environment. We get how do we get such a moment of Omar Baya, Omar Rova, we are then connecting to a moment of transcendence through Tehre Shabal Peh, the second Luchas, that that is the only medium through which we can get our reconnection to Sinai. We're in the Emea Svira. between Pesach, Shavuos, Ramban says, it's like a Chalamoid. Yontif, the beginning, and a Yontif at the end connected. It's the climax. Because what was the point of getting out of Mitzrayim? Kabbalah said Teira. Because without Teira, we might be potentially somebody unique, but we aren't that unique people. It's only with Kabbalah said Teira that that will give us this immunity to the selfishness, anger, 
disdain that human beings tend to have for each other is when we when the soul of the Jew is not a vestigial organ it's being utilized it's being activated potentially Yitamu Chatoim sin should be erased, eradicated from the world, not sinners. But we have to deal with threats to the environment, to our physical health, to our spiritual health, and do what has to be done. The Orechaim HaKodesh brings on the Posek Kisavo, you come to El Yisrael again in the Pausha Unetatem, you're going to plant Koleitz Machel quotes Chazal that just like Oda Marishon was Osek bin Tia Trilla, the Rebbe Nishlam instructed him to do planting of trees in Gan Eden. Similarly, Klayasol coming into El Tisol, Unatatem, be Osek bin Tia Trilla, planting of trees. What are the planting of trees? Says the Ochaim. Building yeshivas. Because those are the true fruits that give us the spiritual health, the vitamins to to deal, to fulfill our potential. The operative cloud that ain balanes makia benisoi, that the person is experiencing the miracle doesn't have the perspective, is too close. To, to appreciate it. We have to step back and think of the miracles, the consecutive miracles, which is the definition of Nes Nista that the Ramban gives and Ramea Simcha gives. Nisim that happened with the consecutivity as if it was just automatic. Emerging now from the the Ben Shalom Zahelfen, emerging from continuing to improve our situation, in El Tisol, it's hard not to not to feel the responsibility to dedicate those energies those talents, those gifts, that consciousness that the Rebbe has granted me 
for more Kvod Shemayim, more Kiddush Hashem, in helping the the next stages and phases of Kvod Shemayim, building Teira and declaring to the world that this is who we are, what we are, and why we are. Hashem, we should hear the service.